Welcome back to the Opposition Podcast, episode 14. And today is a very special episode. I'm going to tell you from the beginning what the plan is, and we'll repeat it a couple of times before we do it. The episode will run for probably about 20 minutes before we shut down the YouTubes and Facebook because I don't reckon I can control our guest for longer than that today. Do you want to introduce him? Yeah, I'm going to introduce the guest. But first up, guys, welcome to the episode today. And if anyone's leaving comments today, please use question at the start. So just type in question and put a question mark and then write your question so we can filter those comments. And it's always good to get in early with the questions because, uh, as Ravi said, we will be switching to Rumble at some point. Now, before I introduce today's guest, um, I was going to say, I've, you know, I know you are. I know your tradition. No, he, look, <laughs> he's not going to be offended. You got a tradition. What's the tradition? Well, my tradition is a welcome to studio, and I just want to acknowledge myself as a traditional owner of this studio. And I think it's. I hope the guest doesn't get too too mad about this because uh, we're hearing across the grapevine that uh, this is an issue that vexes him sometimes, and it's become somewhat of a controversy today. So it's in, it's very good to have Sam Newman on with us to get direct answers from him because Sam, the Prime Minister, is talking about you. I think Lydia Thorpe's talking about you. Daniel Andrews is talking about you. And you're here today with Avi and myself at the Opposition Podcast. And we'd love to ask you some of these questions. Welcome to the show. Good. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> you're going to have to talk. You're going to have to talk close to the mic, Sam. All right. Okay. Come on in close. So it has been a, a wild day today, we see. You're the, you're the number one, that you're the lead story on uh, pretty much every station. And I know it took you a while to get here t today. There was mm. some traffic. Um, gridlock. Gridlock. Mm -hmm. Don't know why. I was actually suspecting, because I did look up on Google Maps, and I thought maybe you were just listening to the news, uh, um, the bulletin over and over, because they were talking about you, because that's what <laughs> I would do. Don't listen to the news. Don't watch the news. Only interested in the American politics, not interested in our politics. I, I like that. I mean, that's kind of what I would like to do. Unfortunately, I got to watch some of the Australian news, but I think that's a good way to live your life these well, days. Uh, the news uh, is full of nonsense. You don't have to watch, yeah, exactly. You don't have to watch the Australian news. You can hear about it on news grabs and uh, promos and mm. uh, that's and headlines in the paper when you go and get coffee. That's about the news these days, isn't it? Uh, I, I think so, but mm. I, I guess you are the news today. Well, I, uh, we do a podcast like you. I do one with Don Scott called You Cannot Be Serious. And as a throwaway line, I'm happy to say it was a throwaway line, but people say, oh, well, it's a throwaway line, was it? I said, are we sick and tired? We've been going on about this for a long time. I find it insulting and demeaning to be welcome to the country that I live in. I've lived all my life here. I've paid taxes. I've contributed to it. Like everyone else, we want to be united, one country. I don't know why we try to divide each other on race. I don't know why the voice is even part of this uh, um, narrative. And to say that I have to be welcomed to every single thing I step into, restaurants, churches, creches, fates, it is out of control. It's exponentially getting worse and worse because no one will push back on it. I have great respect for our friends who live in this country. I am one of them. I have great respect for the Indigenous people. I have great respect for everyone that lives in this country. But this goes... It, 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 if, if no one can see that this is the most divisive thing you can do is pit different coloured skinned people against different coloured skinned people when they live in the same country. No other country in the world does this except someone reminded me that the Maoris do it in New Zealand, in Oceania we are, but no one else does this and singles out the fact that we are divided. Uh, we have two different flags and we pay homage to different people. I don't understand it and that's why I have pushed back on it. I've ha it's gone on long enough and it started out it started out as a bit of a parody, a bit of a satirical thing by Ernie Dingo at the end of last century. He said, welcome to my country when he was up in far north Queensland doing an step, I think. And um, uh, people thought that's a good idea. And it's now just nothing more than a grab for money, for reparation and for the social elites to cream and skim the top. It, that, it, that's all it is. Well, that's like my opinion. 
<laughs> I like how he proved. Yeah, I mean, we've been touching on a lot of these points over over the show over the last couple of weeks with this issue because I believe, like you said, this is very racially divisive. The voice, even welcome to country, you know, we I hear it all the time. I, I don't know if you know Sam. I'm a, I'm a wedding photographer, and I've been to a few weddings. I thought you were going to say I, I didn't. I, I thought you were going to say I don't know if you know this, Sam. I'm black. But that's <laughs> that's okay. Go no, wedding photographer. I've been yeah. to a few weddings, and before the ceremony starts, there is an acknowledgement to country. So. It's kind of steeped Just into crept in, in the last it's, it's, maybe yeah. twenty five years. It's steeped into so many facets of our lives, and sometimes p- potentially there is a place for these things. But like you said, it's overdone now. And you know, I think with the voice happening now, and it is becoming very in your face. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Unlike you, I did listen to the talkback radio all day, mm. and I think ninety nine percent of the people were were saying they say mate a lot of them. <laughs> Started off by saying, I don't always agree with Sammy, but I agree with him on this one. So the people that have interviewed me today, and there's been many um, in the media, I said, just tell me why you are asking to interview me. And uh, they say, well, because you've made us... I said, I'll tell you, I'll answer my own question. You're wanting to speak to me because I said something on a podcast, our podcast called You Cannot Be Serious, that I've got a feeling you, although you won't agree with it, think resonates with a very great majority of people in this country. That's why you're interviewing me. If uh, what I said was they said that's ridiculous. It, it, just think about why you're interviewing me. And they said, yep, that's fair enough. Uh, that's why we are interviewing you because we have had a lot of people agree. And I'm sure there's a hell of a lot don't. And then the first thing you get called is a racist. And so someone said, are you a racist today? And I said, well, tell me what you think a racist is beside me. And... Um, they, no one can tell you what their definition of a racist is, and I'll give it to you. A racist is, uh, racism is about hate, and it's about if you decry, defile, or degrade someone, think you're superior than them, or try and dominate them. I do none of those things. I get on with all Indigenous people I've ever met, um, played with. My great mentor in life was an Indigenous man called Graham Vivian Farmer, Polly Farmer. I owe almost everything in life except my parents and my very close friends to that man for his spiritual guidance, for his physical presence and his mental capacity to overcome adversity. And I say that and I've said that for many, many years. I've said that for decades. And um, I I don't know why this gets brought down to race. It is uh, just cringeworthy to stand and have someone welcome you to your country you've been in uh, who is younger than you in the first place, whether it be auntie some or uncle some, someone else. And when you think about it, those people are enjoying the spoils of a life that started in this country when um, when settlement came in the mid 1770s or whenever it did. Uh, and, uh, and everyone has flourished. Some haven't who are white, some haven't who are black, Adversity strikes everyone. You don't have to have a different skin colour to know what adversity is about. It can be in different forms. I've experienced it. Everyone on this planet in this country has experienced it. But if we all stopped trying to divide each other on those lines and got together, and if you want to have a song rather than boo people at the uh, grand final or slow hand clap, what about We Are One? Have you ever heard the words of We Are One? That should be... I've, I've wrote the words... The, the, I don't know why they don't adopt that. In fact, they do adopt it. And I don't know if I was going to advise people, should they boo at the grand final? What about when all the welcome to country nonsense and crap starts, We uh, the crowd breaks into songs singing, we are one, we are many. Now, let me see if I can read this. We are men, we are many, and from different lands on earth. And we come... And we share and we dream and our voice and we sing with one. I am you, you are me, I am Australian. What is wrong with that song? If people just sang that song when they started the Welcome to Country ceremony and drowned it out, that would be probably better than booing. I like that song too. That's a good song. That, I mean, it resonates with that's a great that's song. A, that's a really it resonates ra- with the migrants, right? That, everyone. That exactly. I can't wait for the headline tomorrow. Uh, racist Newman says we are one. I haven't just said that here today. I've said, yeah. I've been going on about this for years, uh, mate. I've, I've been going on about this for years. We so are, you don't think white privilege is real? 
Is that what you say? I'm confused because uh, that's my excuse in life for failing. White privilege? Yeah, I don't uh, have white privilege. Uh, well, white privilege is real. It's just depend, uh, it just depends on if you're apologising for who you are. Um, plenty of people who, uh, there's plenty of people who are not white who have um, uh, succeeded and prevailed in this country. Uh, many Indigenous people and many Indigenous people haven't, just like many white people who haven't. But there's uh, stratas and there's tears in life in every aspect of life. And it's the social elites that push this and they end up, it's just a push for funds and money mm. uh, to control whoever they're trying to control and to stand there and have to be just browbeaten about standing in your own land and being welcome to it is absolutely, to me, is m almost, it's cringeworthy. Yep. So it, Sam, it's are, insulting. are you saying there's there's no place at all for it? Like, can I put it to you this way? For instance, if, you know how it's really overdone now, if we just did it for a very special occasions, just to acknowledge some of these things. <laughs> Rukshan likes to appease. I just want to point no, out. No, no, you no. Might I'm, not I'm know just saying like, I'm, I'm like the with... Olympic Games or like, you know, something where the international world well, is watching. show people that we're divided. Yeah. Well, not necessarily so for we that. we can really for, highlight it, Sam. Not yeah, necessarily really for that point. Let the world know. Not necessarily for, for, for that point of view. <laughs> Have the anthem. I'm just saying this here have the anthem have the welcome to country do all of these things just do they do a welcome to country in sri lanka well this is the thing right we do have welcoming ceremonies but it's not done in the manner that is done here well, how's it done in sri lanka it's saved for very special is it done by coup huh is it done by military coup or <laughs> no. No. Right. but it's saved for very special i mean lots of countries have these kind of ceremonies but it's saved for very special occasions. Yeah, but it's, it's not but done. It's not, but time. it's not done as dividing. It's not dividing. It's not saying that one group within the country is welcoming yeah. you. It's saying we as a country. But I always thought. Oh. It, I, I always thought it was done. Like it's so pushed right now because just to let us know that this is in our country. I feel like that's why it's being. They're done. trying to tell us it's not. Yeah, yeah. like you're on well, stolen well, land. Well, 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 hang on. Mm. So, not me. I don't say this, but yeah. many historians. Uh, of different races and different political persuasions say that we came here uh, or, or it was a uh, settlement came and um, the Aboriginals were here, but they weren't the first people here. The, um, the uh, Southeast Asians and the Malaysians yep. and uh, all the Filipinos, they were here first mm. and uh, they ended up with the Aboriginal people being here and then settlement came and this country is what it is. There was nothing here before settlement. Now, it doesn't matter how you, it doesn't, uh, that's not a reflection on the people that were here before, but this country is because people arrived here and made it what it is. And everyone is benefiting from it in some way. And mm. there's plenty, I've just said, there's plenty who are not, but that's not uh, reserved for skin color. There's plenty of people doing it tough. Mm -hmm. But that's another that's another matter. That's a political yep. agenda. Speaking of successful uh, Aborigines, why don't, why don't we um, react to so, hear some of the reactions? Oh, well, let's, let's hear some, let's, some, I'll just play all the reactions. Like there's a, there's about a two minute video like, on the news. It's got it's got Lydia thought. I reckon stop it between each one. Let's hear Sammy's uh, response to each right, one. Can you stop it, or is that too hard? Well, let's just have a listen in. See oh. what they're saying. This Good evening. Tonight. Political leaders from the Prime Minister down have condemned Sam Newman for calling on footy fans to boo the welcome to country. The one-time football star made the controversial remarks on his podcast and has led to calls for him to be banned from the game. Eliza Rugg reports. It's an ingrained tradition before every AFL final. So woman Jack are welcome. Enjoy the game. Thank you. But former footballer Sam Newman says he's had enough of the welcome to country. The next time you go to a football game, a final, and they trot this nonsense out, just start booing. Start booing or slow hand clapping or something. Why would you boo the oldest continuous culture known to human history? Pause it, I reckon. Do it between each one. That's our friend there, Premier Daniel Andrews. What would you say to Dan? Mm. Well, uh, Dan Andrew, it's like... It's like um, Qantas, who uh, deface their planes by painting yes on it, who in a captive audience, when you land on the plane, tell you welcome to some country you've never heard of. It's like the Prime Minister using it as a political tool to, uh, uh, to uh, garner up the yes vote. Uh, when there's a plebiscite coming out, how about you let the public uh, make a decision about it? Um, uh, the voice, John Farnham, I don't know if he gave it or they've hijacked his <laughs> song, but... Uh, 
you know, the great John Farnham, he's now telling us, how about if you're having a referendum or a plebiscite, just let the people decide without actually being browbeaten? And um, Daniel Andrews said, why would you uh, boo the oldest, did he say, the oldest Yes, oldest continuous culture, world? yeah. I'm talking about not booing the people in particular. I'm talking about being welcome to a country that he's part of, that I'm part of, and everyone's part of. And if you can't see that that's very divisive, by having people stand in bare skins and things in the middle of the ground and lighting torches and uh, dancing around. If you don't think that is divisive and people feel embarrassed because uh, they're not part of that culture, we are Australians. How about we have the culture of Australia, have one flag, not over... We fly two different flags over our embassies in various parts of the world. What the hell? That's just telling people we're divided and we, we shouldn't be. He also said today, I don't think they put that in that clip, he's, he said he doesn't understand why people would be sick of it. Mm. What would you say to yeah, what, no, The most, uh, could I tell you, uh, I don't know how many uh, contacts I have in my phone. I reckon every single contact in my phone has contacted me today <laughs> and said, they, they said they're absolutely sick and tired of this pandering, this virtuous feigned indignation of stepping into a restaurant, a church, a creche, a kindergarten, a school, uh, anywhere. It just goes on and on and it just, it, it, as I say, it grows exponentially because no one actually pushes back and said, hang on a minute, uh, how many times a day do I have to be welcome to the country I live in? It, it, and, and I can understand Dan Andrews having that point of view because he's into the uh, quota system. I, I, he's on record as saying we're going to, on the quota system, not on meritocracy, when he appoints people in his government or uh, does business with them, he says, this is on the quota system. If you depending on your skin colour, we'll give you the business. Mm. I can understand. Skin colour, gender. Mm. I can, un gender. I can understand why he pushes back on it. But that's, I'm not trying, to, I'm just, I am about, they are the racist people. This, this is about the most anti-racist thing you can get is just stop telling us that we're welcome in our country when we're welcome. Anyhow, we should be welcome. But who is telling us that we're welcome and why? In Dan's defence, he'd probably like to raise a Chinese flag above <laughs> Parliament. Anyways, um, <laughs> let's move on to the next. Keep, keep playing I'll that. Keep playing it. Keep let's playing see it. who else there was in that one. Why, why would you do that? That's a sentiment shared by the Prime Minister. Showing respect. Uh, costs nothing. It enriches all of us. And the boss pause of the that, AFL. Wait, wait, pause that one. So, so he yeah. says showing respect costs nothing. The Prime Minister says to you about you that showing respect costs nothing. Why wouldn't you do it? I respect. I have. Uh, I respect people in this country who qualify as Australians. Why that man there, the Prime Minister, who is. Uh, I'm not sure how sharp he is, but I'm not. Why? Don't be careful. He was raised by a single mum. In a commission flat. In a commission flat. Which, yeah. which has got uh, uh, affluence and stupidity are not uh, <laughs> confined to what side of the river you're born on. Uh, I'm not saying he's stupid and I'm not saying he's affluent. I'm just saying that has nothing to do with it. It's the values that you're given. And with respect, we are trying to get respect for everyone rather than dividing people along racial lines and saying, welcome to the country that you were born in, you live in, you've grown up in. And why do we have to be welcome? Now, you were about to play Gil McLaughlin. Now, mm. did you hear what he said already? Or do you want uh, to play uh, it? First? Oh, yeah, you play, Let's play Gil it. McLaughlin. I'm not going to dignify sort of individual responses that are out in the community other than to say I disagree uh, very definitively. We should bring the people who run the game into disrepute because they're just telling us where and what to say and when to say it. Leave us alone. Sam Newman first made the comments on his podcast. That's what we say for the voice. We say no. Indigenous Senator Lydia Thorpe pause it, pause wants it. Newman wants to talk about. So, Tell us about so, so my beef with Gil McLaughlin. We want to hear. If he doesn't know this by now, he should. His ears should be burning because I've been doing this. Three years ago on a podcast that Mike Sheehan, well-renowned journalist, sensible person, and Don Scott and myself, two ex-footballers in the Hall of Fame of the AFL, Someone said because there was a Black Lives Matter 
brawl or a parade somewhere and Don Scott said, why do the media go to Nicky Widmar when BLM matters arise? Or what does he got to do with Black Lives Matter? Because uh, Black Lives Matter is a domestic terror organisation in America. Doesn't matter how you doctor it up, that's what it is. So then that happened to be the 30th anniversary of Winmar lifting his jumper up out at Victoria Park. And one of those two, I wasn't at the game, they both said they were at the game and they thought it was a bit misrepresented because they thought it was about his fitness and his large stomach because he had been... Uh, he had been just got a game on the fact that he wasn't fit and they said the whole of the crowd most of the crowd thought it wasn't about his skin color mike sheehan said the only person who would know what he meant was nikki winmar which we all agreed with we said that is correct but the perception was generally it wasn't about that that's the most res that's the most respectful conversation you can have about a very very important uh, uh, iconic moment in football and we did not decry defile or degrade winmar he we said or she and said if he, that's what he says that's what we says so we suddenly found ourselves with a lawsuit, uh, a, a charged with vilification, and who brought it? Who brought it on us? Uh, that man, that hapless man, that man, Gil McLaughlin, and his little lawyer mate. They thought, "Oh, we'll be virtuous. We'll show how. Uh, we'll show how. Um, um, we will just. Uh, put, we'll kick these two blokes under the bus. We'll push them under the bus, and we will show how virtuous we are and how noble. And we'll do a bit of pandering to everyone out there. This is after he made a botch of uh, uh, the 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 Adam Goods thing when uh, people started booing Adam Goods because he pretended to throw a spear at the Charlton, Carlton cheer squad. And McLaughlin said, "Oh well, don't boo Adam Goods." and that's like red rag to a bull. Let's don't boo. If you don't say don't boo someone, I don't know of anyone, anyone, and you might be able to tell me, do you know of any Indigenous player that's been booed because he's Indigenous? Well, I, I couldn't the imagine. Be, I'm so. telling you, there's not one. No one boos people because yeah, of their that. skin colour. Uh, no one does that. When, when, and, and, how, and if someone starts booing someone... but. Because not not these days, color. no. How, well, how no. would you know that they've, that they've probably done something the on the ground, like mm. belted one of their followers or teammates or done something that's got up their nose? That's 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 consistent for everyone that plays football. But it, Did it, you ever it, get booed? Did I get booed? I, I can't remember you a game You still get when booed. I did. You're being booed all day on Twitter. <laughs> there you go. You should uh, identify as I, black I, and then you could cry victim. Yeah, or or or, or trans, it's something I don't know. I could Which by the end of this session, we'll have you in some box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, any box. Um. So that's McLaughlin. Yeah. That's McLaughlin threw three people under the bus because he thought of doing some political get some political mileage. Uh, we 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 sued. We sued. We got we got fined a hundred thousand dollars. We sued the papers uh, and the publications that printed uh, what uh, the man who photographed Winmar doing it. We sued him because he we, he turned out to be a liar. He lied about what he said we were. So we sued him. So the whole thing backfired. Did you win that? You won that. We yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, so we got our money back, and we got a little bit in. Uh, on top of it, we just got a little bit of reparation on top of it. Reparation. Uh, yeah. uh, well, a little bit of a stipend came our way, and McLaughlin sat there during our mediation, uh, throwing us under the bus when it, when there was absolutely the most legitimate conversation, and we never sided with the people who said Winmar didn't do it on that basis. We sided with Winmar. Uh, but no, he still went on with it because he thought it might appease his social whiteness and his supremacy and whatever he thought. I don't know what he thought. Uh, but uh, used to get on well with him. But um, You used to? When was that? Oh, well, well, before that. Before when was that? that? What, what, what year were we talking about? Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Mm. So you haven't spoken to him since? Uh, <laughs> he wouldn't speak to he. I, I, he said to me, we should have a coffee. And I said, yes, we should. 
And he, uh, so time went by and we used to do it on the podcast to say, someone had said, have you had coffee with Gil yet? I said, no, he hasn't rang back. He actually texted back one other time. And I said, do you really want to have coffee or is this just a, uh, was this a game? And that's the last I've ever heard of him. No, mate, he's about, he's a pussycat. <laughs> he's a pussycat. Isn't he almost done? He's uh, finished, yeah. yeah. And, and what is, what is, what is his game legacy? Here? Well, I wanted to ask you about legacy, yeah, and, yeah, legacy and and and, and football. AFL seems to be very uh, involved with a lot of these type of agendas, um, whether it be issues with indigenous um, issues that we deal with in society, whether yes. it's with these gender issues. Uh, is the f- game, uh, for lack of a better word, woke? Is it gone this kind of woke direction? Uh, this administ- this, uh, this administration makes it woke. They go out of their way to make it woke. Yeah. Uh, for no reason. People want to go to the football as a release. They don't want to be told to vote for gay marriage, uh, which the, the, the AF, I'm good on you. If you, I don't care who you are or who you mm. marry or what you are, that's nothing. But when that uh, particular topic came out, uh, the AFL got involved and has had rainbow flags up everywhere. And then, um, uh, then the, uh, uh, this, mat- this, this matter came up about uh, the voice. They mm. uh, said, well, we should uh, vote yes for the voice. W- stop telling the public who want to go to the football and watch reasonably good games. The game is the game, the stature uh, and the, the physical appeal of the game is in decline. Mm. The, the, the way it's played is hardly exciting to people other than the very vocal uh, parochial fans of each side. No mm. one gives a stuff how the game is Played if you're a supporter, you just want the sides to win. But the finals games, although they've been sellouts, have been shocking. Most of them, uh, if they could get the game and the umpiring right and the mm. various uh, the, 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 the basics, the basics, <laughs> and see if you can tell if a ball's touched and how hard would it be? Because they we field photographed a man stepping onto the moon in 1969. If they can't <laughs> tell, get some cameras set up on the goalpost to see if a ball's touched yeah. or it's over the line. They just concentrated on the basic things. That, uh, that tick people off rather than go on with all this nonsense. And I don't know why they but do I, it. But I rarely hear any pushback from clubs. I don't hear any pushback from players. Everyone's kind of very silent about their opinions. Just just talk more into the mic. I think a few people are complaining you know, about I, 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 I your really, I, <laughs> I rarely hear anything from any player. About what? Opi- just any 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 type of opinion well, on the, anything. But, but when I are they terrified? Player, I played for, well, well, I played for 18 years. You yeah. know, let the club run you. And the AFL's meant to run the clubs. It's no good having a dog and barking yourself. Um, uh, why would the players... Th- I mean, is it happening in the background? Are they arguing about these things I in the background? I don't know. As, yeah. as, as someone said, ban me from going to the football. Well, that would be a hollow ban because mm. I don't go to the football <laughs> for the very reasons I've just said. Yeah. Uh, the very reasons I've just said. Um, it, it is the, the amount of people that agree with what I say about not necessarily booing that got people's attention it was a throwaway line i'm happy to say i'll stand but i'm happy to stand by it because if you say it you said where it. are you watching the grand final uh well i, I don't know where i'll watch yeah. the grand final it won't be from the ground no, and if it was i'd get there after the welcome to country ceremony oh, so you wouldn't you wouldn't go there and boo yourself no i don't want to uh i don't want to uh it uh, seriously was just it was just to get people's attention and the media it love it and they <laughs> latch onto it and I wear it and that's fine that's all but um, you got did, did you get new listeners to the uh, podcast what's your podcast called uh, you cannot be serious you cannot be serious by the way Rukshan wants to know why he never got an invite onto it <laughs> why, why you what why he never got an invite well um, we we, we uh, have because you need diversity in your group there and yeah, I feel so, like you need so a I'm quite a perfect uh, diversity yeah. podcast. Co- what? Perfect diversity podcast. Yeah. Yes. So, so what we try and do is get people that are generally uh, in in the public arena. If you could tell us, and I'm just ask, ask this uh, quite uh, um, um, respectfully, if you could tell us Don't what public arena you're in and what we could ask you, uh, we would. Uh, we usually do them for 45 minutes. The interviews. If Sri Lankan politics and weddings. <laughs> yeah. Really. Uh, <laughs> Well, we spoke to the man who invented the uh, celebrancy. Well, there you go. Yeah, uh, uh, I could uh, tell you a whole lot about weddings in yeah. Australia, Asian weddings, South Asian weddings. No, but honestly, I think I was just joking. No, but that's I, right. I'm, I, I'm, I can come talk about politics, weddings. Yeah. What else? Sri Lanka. He, he he pretends to know a lot about a lot of things, but he he knows 
a lot about nothing. He actually, he's a, he's a good digital guy. This is his yeah. structure he set up here, isn't it? Pretty no, good. A lot of weddings yeah. paid for this studio. <laughs> yeah, no, well, um, uh, we have a... Uh, this reminds me of our, our setup. It's so mm. different. You've got the second best podcast yeah. in town. That's we get I, I, I don't even know how our podcast is. I, all I know is that Podbean, who is apparently one of the carriers, they say that we've had 12 million downloads. and they, they work how many episodes we've done to how many people who have downloaded it. And uh, we think they say there's about 70,000 a week listen to us. I don't know if that's right. That could well be wrong. I don't care. I don't mind. But so they promoted. So you wanted to they grab attention. They, they, no, no. You wanted to grab attention. The media did your job for you. They promoted. I even saw you. you uh, hang, hang on. Did I want to grab attention? I speak to Don Scott about a whole lot of different things that we think ticks the public off or might be in the public interest. And this was one of them. And I said, if we're serious about this going on and on and on and it's just gaining strength at every turn and every function you go to and when it's nonsensical, uh, with the, the people who deliver the welcome to country charge like a wounded bull, why do, they, why do they charge for it? Why don't they, of the $40 billion a year that's given to that's such a good point. Indigenous Australia, why don't they dip into that and do it for nothing? Uh, it is a rort. It yeah. is an absolute rort, the whole thing. And um, I don't do you know how much they get. How much do they get paid? Yeah, for you, we went through through the pay scale. I, we we did our research. What are we it. looking at? We're looking at from uh, very minor things of about three hundred and fifty dollars to uh, opening church fates or things to the real biggie, the big stuff, the five thousand dollar ones. Five thousand. How much? And this is if you want dancers and people in war paint and smoking ceremonies. It just goes on and on and on, and uh, and we. we Last year, I went to the grand final last year, but for a, not because Geelong was playing, because I there's a reason I went. And they paid reference to three different indigenous uh things on the ground before the game. One was a bloke called Uncle, I don't know what his name, Uncle Jack. He died, and, and God rest his soul, Uncle Jack. And we had a tribute to him. Why I have no idea. He didn't play football. Oh, everyone said, Who is Uncle Jack? Or well, I don't know what that was his name. Then we had Welcome to Country. And then we had another dancing exhibition of uh, indigenous uh, uh, didgeridoo playing and dancing. Before. And I thought, What happened? And then at half time, an indigenous band. I said, Holy crap. Uh, how, how much of this? How, how, what, what is going on? Why doesn't someone say, Hang on a minute? This, this is so insulting. It is just insulting. It's demeaning to have to watch this, this feigned virtuosity, this guilt that we are somehow, we, we have the stolen land. We've, we've, we've stolen land. What does that mean? The st stolen land. There was nothing here before someone arrived and did something with it. And we should all embrace those people and everyone who made it what it is and the people who were there before us. Do, do you agree that some people did bad? Like in history, there were bad times for the Aboriginal people. When, of course, yeah. that's part of the history. But part of the history, the main part of the history, is since settlement. Uh, that happened after settlement, of course, didn't it? Mm. The stolen generation. Before people arrived here and made this country what it is, there were some bad things done. So that's part of the history. We reflect on that and we respect it. And we, 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 we acknowledge it. That's the history of our country. But don't welcome us to our country uh, before uh, f for coming here and making it what it was and sometimes what it wasn't. Mm. Do you know, let's finish that one. I think there's still uh, our good friend Lydia. Is she? Sam Newman first made the comments on his podcast. That's what we say for The Voice. We say no. Indigenous Senator Lydia Thorpe wants Newman banned from attending AFL matches until he says sorry for encouraging booing. He needs to educate himself and not, not be so racist yeah. all the time. Uh, are you a racist? Now, that, what, I'm very no, okay, no, that, no, no, that, some, please, look, I, I think it was a provocative tongue-in-cheek request for people to stop pandering. Are you now sort of saying, OK, well, don't do that? Not at all, mate. I'm not retreating from anything I say. In 2020, Sam Newman issued a formal apology to Nicky Winmar after questioning the motive of his famous stand against racism. And do you know who instigated it? Who? 
Gil McLaughlin and his little lawyer friend. Okay. Gil McLaughlin says... And um, now, that, first of all, that's a lie. I didn't hmm. apologise to Nicky Winmar. Mike Sheehan read out an apology to Nicky Winmar. That was part of the settlement terms. You never apologised. Uh, Mike Sheehan was, of the three of us, was designated to read out the apology as part of the settlement. On behalf of... of On behalf of the, uh, for the podcast. So that's a lie. Uh, as for uh, poor old Lydia... Uh, uh, be good if Lydia perhaps got her house in order before she started uh, cavorting around in uh, strip clubs and telling everyone and shouting at people and abusing them. And uh, the old standby. She, she said something about your character today. Uh, no, hang on. Yeah, the character. <laughs> the old standby, uh, the old well worn word in the English lexicon, racist. Mm -hmm. That's if you can. That's the only word you can think of uh, because uh, she happens to be uh, indigenous and I happen to be Half white. So. Well, we have, we'll, 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 mm. we'll, oh, and, and then she said, um, I need to be educated. Well, uh, Lydia, could I tell you, my doll? Um, I'm educated. Don't worry about that. i got a feeling I'm better educated than you and I know more about this country than you've had hot dinners. Uh, so uh, I understand where you're coming from and it's your point of view and this is my point of view. Uh, there's plenty of people in this country say the yes vote is a good thing and very high, powerful, hard-hitting people say it. I am saying that I don't agree with it and my stance is we shouldn't vote for it and I'll stand by that and I hope people join me and I hope the thing gets beaten. Do you know what's funny to me? I watch that and I think mm. he's more genuine because Sam's entire um, thing doesn't rely on – like it, it's not an industry for him. It's not his job. Mm. For Lydia, she, she's, she's created her entire – um, profile based on this victimhood mm. and she needs to, she needs people like Sam to actually get her in front of the camera mm. to generate that publicity for her to be able to talk about how well, much it's not even about she... that with Lydia Thorpe honestly like I'm just gonna be completely honest here when she goes to parliament she acts disrespectfully she to everyone she doesn't respect the place no at all. One. she does yeah. all sorts of theatrics in there mm. um, if we're talking about being respectful to certain traditions and customs she goes in there and she does what she wants and makes all sorts of scenes well, so, remember, what, what did she do when she had to swear in? Remember that yeah, whole she, she show? Yeah, she did the whole show. She didn't want to swear allegiance to the Queen and, and she carried on and did all these mm. kind of theatrics. So, you know, yeah. her, her criticisms fall fall on deaf ears sometimes because she is some, she explains about herself when she criticises. Uh, like, that's who she is. And I think there's a person, an Indigenous man called Mr Pearson, I think who I think has stated publicly that he hates white people and they should be out of the country and has no intention of uniting anyone. This is a man, I'm told, who has done extremely well uh, in his life about um, uh, what he's achieved. Uh, someone told me that today. And, well, uh, the, so this, this is, is a not, no Pearson. He's a a is, is that what, something he said on public record or is this something private? Uh, I think he uh, no. He's received lots of funding, like programs that he's involved in. Indigenous no, programs. so no, no. But what he, yeah, what yeah, Sammy's yeah, saying I think, here? I think you'll find that he is not in favour of uh, any people who aren't of his race. And uh, that I'm isn't he a unionist? He's a union. I'm not guy. sure if he's a but he's made some. Questions. Thought, he's made these no, questionable comments. Yeah, I've, I've seen his comments. I've seen yeah, his thing. So, so we don't make any questionable comments about the people that we're talking about. Mm. I'm, as I say, I uh, hope to get on with everyone, but I'm just sick and tired. Like every most of the people in this community are sick and tired of being welcomed, and f f uh, uh, this patronising, pandering nonsense that goes on, and we think, oh, and. If no one pushes, it just goes on and on. Nothing will be enough. No, it'll never stop. It, 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 they'll go, oh, no, we better do that. It's just, it is it is cringeworthy. Like, what gives Lydia Thorpe the right to welcome anyone to come? Like, does she welcome half herself to country <laughs> in the morning? Does she wake up every morning and go, hey. Hey, listen, I don't know Lydia Thorpe, and I'd, I would be, I would say, delighted to meet her. I have no problem meeting Lydia Thorpe or having a chat to her about so her. I think she... We, I don't know. She hangs around these areas around here. <laughs> well, I have no we problem can go talking. There. It's, what day is it? I have Thursday no problem night. talking it's, to anyone. There's good strip clubs around here. I don't know. <laughs> Do you want to, Sammy? No, we'll no, talk about no, it after no, off the show. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. It's a, uh, um, uh, how, uh, it's a storm in a teacup. It and, is, honestly. And I saw, I saw Dan Andrews when he was actually, when I was listening to him, he referred to you as Sammy. Yeah. Are you guys mates? 
I don't think I've ever met. Uh, uh, listen, if Dan Andrews, I understand if Dan Andrews has that opinion. That's his opinion. An opinion can't be wrong. It's only an opinion. No, no, I, I agree with you on that. But I yeah. just like he was he was calling you Sammy. And yeah. is that, that's like, oh, like uh, do you have a nickname for Dan? No. What's your nickname for Dan? <laughs> I know you have a nickname for Dan. No, I don't have a nickname. Come on, everyone no, has a no, nickname for Dan. No, I don't. He's the chairman. Premier. No, he's the no, premier. I not don't even agree chairman. With him. I think he's running probably the most corrupt and dishonest government probably ever. But I I don't I Gigi Dan. I can we create I a nickname? A he him. calls you Sammy. You've got to have a nickname no, for Dan. No, no, he's the premier and um, Master. His holiness. No. Um, I'm I'm not biting. No, I, if I had a nickname for him. No, um, but that's what I'm saying. Let's brainstorm. You're quick. What do you think we, we should call him? I don't know. What would Trump call him? You love Trump. What would Trump call Dan? Oh, there we go. There's a Trump. Well, shop. so now there's another thing. Uh, we were going to get onto this. Well, well, so so. Here, here's another thing: you get intimidated not to um, have an opinion about. If you like Trump, you automatically get ostracised by people for whatever reason. I don't know, but they automatically say, "Well, he's loud and he's brash and he's rude and he touches people up." And you say, what do you think of him as the president? What did you think of his policies? No, but he's rude and he speaks badly to people. I said, well, you'd probably speak badly to people too if you'd been tried to run out of office. From the day you stepped into office, they tried to get you out by in, in, impeaching you twice, by uh, indicting you 48 times when you're trying to uh, run against the Democratic Party. You would probably uh, uh, have a chip on your shoulder too. But if you can tell me, anyone you could tell me, what you dislike about his policies, uh, then uh, give us a call. And no one can tell you what they dislike about his policies. Uh, and I meant to say, um, when Tony Jones was interviewing me, he said, am I a racist? And I said to him, uh, besides me, what do you think a racist is? No one will ever... He, he couldn't tell you me. can't define uh, it. But they, they can't define it. You just, if you disagree with someone for a different... A different stick, Skin colour, you're a racist. Mate, and that I've is so called, illogically called... stupid. That is so illogically mm -hmm. nonsensical. I've been called a Nazi. I'm I'm a proud Jew. I've been mm -hmm. called a Nazi when I've gone to, and I used to in the beginning when I used to interview them a bit like you copied me years ago on the footy show. Yeah. Um, I used to go interview <laughs> before I was born. You copied me. Um, but I used to interview them at the at the rallies, and I'd rock up to these, mm -hmm. you know, these wild feral lefties, and they would, and I would wear my kipper on my head, not just, not because I practiced anymore, yeah. but m just to, just to just if, provocation. No, no, no. The video. Yeah. I wanted to capture them yeah. labeling me a Nazi while wearing this, and it's a, it's a bit it's the same as the racist. It's racist. Yeah. It's the same thing. Um, it's back a, actually a backhand, a compliment. If you can't think of anything else to say to someone besides their fact that they're a Nazi or a racist, I reckon you're through to the semis without dropping a set. Mm. I, I was actually talking to a reporter the other, the other day uh, who was writing a, uh, for, for uh, you know, nine papers, writing a report, and then he wanted to – he goes, oh, I'm going to include you. I go, just don't, I don't, don't put one of your pesky um, titles in there, you know, far right. I go, otherwise, don't call me again. And he goes, oh, but but you are far right. I go, w which one of my uh, views are far right? He goes, oh, I, I don't want to get into that argument with you. My editors won't agree. They To my editors, you are far right. So I go, so you don't even believe the nonsense you're going to write. You're just writing it to appease the editors. Mate, uh, I had a couple of women, uh, journalists, uh, said some... Um, unsavory things about me and I replied and they said oh that's pretty ordinary to say those things about those people but they only do it because uh, it's clickbait they think if they stir me up and they'll come to the right person if you say something bad about me I'm likely to respond and uh, they the paper's happy because uh, uh, they give me a belting uh, they're happy because they got their name in the print and um, uh, it's just a never-ending it's a never-ending game it's a charade to back to Trump, um, old mm -hmm. mate on your t-shirt there. I actually just came back from. Uh, we did a tour. Rebel did a tour of about fifty people to yep. Israel and um, and Dubai. Uh, the, the focus of the tour was actually the Abraham Accords. This is something that Trump does not get any recognition for. The most amazing peace deal Should that have. I cannot believe I've witnessed in my lifetime. And I'm telling you, as somebody that travels a lot, and I have a an Israeli flag tattooed on my yep. on my arm. So, and to be able to walk into a Middle Eastern country, yep. to not only 
not afraid to display it, to proudly display it in a way that you know, I walk in, in the UAE and the Emirates there, mm -hmm. the, the Emiratis there, they look at you with with a sense of they respect you for it. They think that to them it's actually something special. That was Trump, uh, and uh, that was Trump with North Korea. No, no. One, uh, and and should have won the Nobel Peace Prize probably three times, mm. as opposed to the most unworthy and uh, racist ever to have led a country, and that's Barack Obama got a Nobel Peace Prize for nothing. But uh, to be fair, Nobel, was, Nobel be Peace fair Prize, no, no, Nobel Peace Prize is generally given to the worst people. Yasser Arafat, a, a, a terrorist, got it. So I don't think it's a big thing that he didn't get. I think Trump definitely deserved it if it really meant, if, if it really held any value. Um, Trump, the one, the guy that they call the most divisive, and they labelled him all these names, a racist. He he was he's brought the most peace, the most stability to the world. Ukraine and Russia, do you think that would happen now with Trump? And uh, Ukraine and Russia is purely because of Trump. They couldn't get over the fact that they made up that story about Russia helping him win the election, mm. and they impeached him because of it. Just total and utter fabricated lies by Clinton, Hillary. And the whole uh, the whole brigade, and they still hold Russia. Um, why that? Why they haven't re rounded? Well, Biden, poor old Biden, doesn't realise why he's been <laughs> rounded up. But why they haven't <laughs> rounded them up for spending hundreds of billions of dollars on having Ukraine defend themselves against Russia is beyond me. When that country is in so much decline, and uh, people are living on the streets, there's thousands and hundreds and thousands of them. And I'm telling you, uh, Trump in a fair election would win with a leg in the air, but they will make sure that they rig the election. No, and no, we're not going to say. <laughs> no, you, can, you can talk about this. You're now. allowed to talk. You can talk now on you after the, all that stuff's been done. Now on YouTube, you can talk about the election interference. You can talk about this. Well, do you want to go over the They will never let him win because yeah. if they don't, they'll assassinate him. Well, I mean, look, all the, the cases they put up again, I think it's what, like almost a couple hundred charges, these indictments. I mean, they're fully going after Trump and they're trying to stop him from running in certain states. You have his do you, own... want, do you want to move this now just to rumble so that we're safe? Because I've also got the COVID stuff that I want to bring to oh, you. Well, we'll finish so... up with the voice stuff before we move because there's a few... Um... All right, we'll bring the voice stuff. Up. A few Let, we'll people. go back onto Trump in yeah, a we'll then and, and, and back to that. Finish the voice stuff and then we'll move it. Well, with the voice stuff, Sam, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, you know, it's become very divisive and there's lots of people... <laughs> Have you seen that? Well, yeah. Lots, lots of people are arguing amongst themselves. Families are arguing amongst themselves. Mm. People on the street are arguing amongst themselves. And of course people who are campaigning. There's been a few altercations between these two groups. Uh, there was one uh, that's being caught on camera, which is allegedly a university professor. Has that been confirmed? She was a... Uh, well, I, the university has answered us saying that she's not on the staff. She's yeah. not paid staff. <laughs> yeah. So I think Emma. that's pretty much a confirmation. <laughs> but uh, I'll play the video for those of you watching at home. Mm. And look, it is, it is a bit... Uh, there's a bit of foul she's language there as well. She's not on the paid well. staff. She's a professor. She's not on the paid staff. But... Look, let's just watch this video and then we'll kind of get your reaction to what's happening uh, with this stuff as well. I'm getting ah, a photo so of your lambs, you stupid mole. Not, get out of the way. Don't you dare. Get out of the way. Up. You just grabbed my phone and assaulted me. Yeah. Right. That's now. What's your name? What's this crazy bitch's name? She just spat Excuse on me. me. What don't, is this crazy don't bitch's talk name? Me. Go away. You just spat on me. You've been now away. done for assault. Go what away. is your name? What's Calling your name? Calling the police. Good. Call the police now. No you just way. spat on me. So I did saw. not. You did just I spit on me. Not. It's on video, mm -hmm. you stupid bitch. My phone and the soul of me. The craziest part is that she denied, denied it straight away. <laughs> this is typical of these But, but of in things. 2023, it, you can just make up a new reality. It doesn't matter. Men can be women, so she can also not have spat. It doesn't matter that it's on video. No, it's... Um... But there's no... I, I don't know. There's... Look, if, if this was the other way around, Sam, if this was a no campaigner and had spat on someone... If that was you, Sam, yeah, if you to had spat a yes on someone, campaigner today, the police would have been at your door. You would have had some, something to answer for that. Yeah, the media would have been all over it. The only difference is that um, I'm not ill-bred. Uh, that woman is obviously ill-bred, and that's, that's not... Uh, that's not uh, 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 that's not uh, running it down. If anyone spits at someone like that, uh, you are ill-bred or you're inbred. One of the two. And I uh, must get a name because I'd love my kids to be tutored by her. 
Yeah. Uh, send her I'll give it to you after. She's Could probably you... going to be looking for a job pretty soon. So, uh, so that's just breeding, and uh, that's probably ignorance and breeding are the uh, greatest drawbacks we have in society. But that's that's the same group, right? That one throw the word racist. Talk about you know she's obviously doing that in the name of tolerance. This is about uniting, you know, br- reparations and making bringing the black community into. Th- this is all for well-meaning, great uh, um, things. So, and and these are also the same people. Remember that that were advocating everything about COVID recently. Mm. She was, she was probably wearing four masks. Yeah, back these in the were day. probably like the four masks. The yes campaign is for the Labor Party. She was that was a, a Labor um, Labor a, stand, a Labor here. stand for for a federal and and local, and I believe a councillor was also a Labor councillor. So that was a very that was a Labor stand pushing the yes campaigning for the yes. These are people that really believed COVID was going to wipe us off the map. Only you know months ago, I could probably count it on my hand how long ago that the COVID was the biggest threat. Suddenly. It's okay, and and for them, for them, if you spat at somebody, that was a uh, that was assault with a deadly weapon. I th- I personally think um, she should be charged accordingly. If if you believe that that is a, a deadly weapon, hundred um, percent. I think there needs to be some sort of accountability. So, what do you issue. think, Sammy? Well, so the uh, the COVID saga, um, Dan, uh, who I don't have a name for, is the premier. He ran this state into the ground over lies that were told by Brett Sutton making up crap about the, the we're gonna, virus. He's going to get us thrown off. Yeah. Let, we're going to get into COVID. This is about this woman. and um, oh, okay. we'll, we'll get to COVID after this. Give it this. one minute after this one. Yeah. Um, this woman, yeah. Yeah, or well, what about the woman? So she spits at someone. Uh, that, that's assault. Uh, if someone spat at me, um, um, well, I've had people spit at me. Uh, um, uh, why didn't the bloke get a name and charge her? I think they might. I think, I think, I think he might be doing that. But happening. do you think, like, there's a double standard here that 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 it is okay for one side to get physical and violent? Yeah. Well, they're making, why do they make mistakes? Well, right? well, you just have to have a look at. Um, so I got put off uh, the television because on my podcast I said George Floyd, who they for two years burnt America to the ground. Over George Floyd. And they who, tried to hear as well. Yes, who I said was, beside it being unfortunate how he died, was a piece of shit. And he was. And uh, he had a string of convictions, salts. Uh, he, uh, and I, so that uh, got, I got put off um, the television for saying that on the podcast. Um, so it's okay for um, the Black Lives Matter people, this domestic terror organisation, to burn America to the ground for two years, but a bunch of people who Trump didn't incite to do it, he specifically said, peacefully, oh, yeah. do not do anything against the law, but people broke into the Capitol building and most of them are still in jail and there's an impeachment going on about yeah. that. Uh, you cannot get two different standards of a legislative justice than what's going on in that country over there. And unless uh, someone unseats uh, the incumbent, uh, maybe Gavin Newsom will step up. I don't care, but you've got to get stupid Joe out because he is retarded. <laughs> do, <laughs> do, 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 why do you care so much about American politics as opposed to Aussie politics? Because I, 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 I thought Trump was fantastic. I, I, I would rather go to a Trump rally than go and watch. Um, Have Miley's, you been to one? No, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't been over there. I'd rather go and go and watch Miley Cyrus. I, I, I would watch watch a Trump rally. He's entertaining, and he. Uh, he keeps his uh, what if they did a welcome friends to country? closer, <laughs> but he keeps his enemies even closer. He's got a great relationship mm. with Putin. They say, why have you got a good relationship with Putin? He said, well, that's the way you get on with people. Mm. That's the way you manage uh, world situations. He has never started any wars. He doesn't like people coming in that are illegal over the border when everyone else lines up and comes in the proper way. He... Uh, he likes uh, likes fossil fuels because they power your cars and they heat your home up and they give you air conditioning and uh, the prices haven't gone up because uh, fossil fuels. Do you know there's a thousand vo- active volcanoes in the world and they spew out more crap, more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere in a day than humanity has since it's been on the planet. Uh, and if you then uh, the nonsense goes on about electric vehicles and how that's going to save the planet seriously i mean honestly this is just another push for money another push for uh, the social elites to get in on the gravy train 
So again, why do you? But why do you prefer Climate American? Change. Why do you prefer American politics? We need you here, Sam. We need you. No. Talking sense into the Australian people. <laughs> no. Well, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm not. Uh, no. Um, why so, don't you have a T-shirt of I don't know. Um, who? Yeah. That's uh, what's the opposition leader? Peter Dutton. Peter Dutton. Yeah. Just with Dutton. I forgot his name. Dutton. That's how that, important he is. And that, and that is exactly the case. If we uh, we get behind someone that looked as though they're up and about like Donald Trump. No, Donald Trump is fantastic. Who do you reckon could, like give it an Aussie, any Aussie that could be a, a Donald Trump saviour to Australia? No, I don't know. Jeff Kennett is good uh, in Victoria. Do you get on with Jeff? Oh, I get on very well with Jeff. But Were, uh, you, were you traditionally Labor? Uh, no, I wasn't mm. traditionally mm. Labor. No, never been Labor. But that's all right. I've, see, the great thing I keep saying about this country uh, at the minute, anyhow, is that we don't uh, have political, sporting or religious wars in this country. You know, it's pretty unique when you think about mm. it. Uh, you can have a reasonably um, a reasonably uh, vigorous chat to people who are Labor supporters if you're a Liberal and um, you uh, don't cross swords too much with people who are of a different to religious uh, persuasion of you and mm. sporting wars we don't have to segregate the public from throwing bottles at one another and flares only in the soccer fraternity which is disappointing because of the uh, european influence in that but uh, you get a hundred nearly a hundred thousand people to the mcg on uh, successive weeks and successive games and there's no trouble there's mm. no you know there's a bit of shouting and a bit of swearing but we're pretty unique as far as that goes. It, but it is changing a little bit, the especially in the political world. Like yesterday, you saw that video I did, um, the Streeters. Yeah. That couple mm. was unbelievable. An older couple, Labor voters. Go on Twitter, just play that last, that, I'll find that, yeah. that small clip because I, it's exactly what you're talking about. I think the older generation, especially, especially since I've been working in this field, I've, I've experienced it firsthand. When you talk to... Older generation, if they're late, if they're like staunchly labour for generally because of the unions, they were workers or whatever. They're from the western suburbs. They can have a decent conversation with you about it, and you can walk away and agree, you know, agree about an issue or disagree about an issue. But it does not become a personal, hateful, no. vengeful attack. It becomes. It'll be uh, if you go to my Twitter. I think I'll I go to Twitter. Your Twitter yeah. um, and. I feel like we are losing that though in Australia. We are losing it. When you look at the young gener the younger generation in the politics and how heated it is, the fact, like I said to you, I would go to rallies and interview people and then the, the first thing, has a the first thing, not, don't do the whole thing. Go there's a short one. There's a short one where it literally shows what I'm talking about. Uh go Yeah, it'll be it'll be there somewhere. And it's pretty hard not to get ticked off with um that one. Climate activists who yep. go and glue themselves to the road or throw <laughs> paint and or not paint but throw foodstuffs at art in galleries. I mean, what is the mentality of that? Look at it's play it's, this for him just so he sees letting what, your tires down at people that run uh, own SUVs. It's mad. Watch this. Tell I want your reaction to this. Twenty years. Twenty years in Labor. And I've spoken to my uh, quite a few friends in the Labor Party. They're not going to vote uh, yes. They're going no as well. Do you vote Daniel Andrews? Uh, in the lower house, yes. Upper house, no. We're going to blame you. <laughs> Not me. Not you. You didn't vote. I wouldn't vote for that bastard if you <laughs> paid me. God bless you. This is your husband? Of course. How long have you been married? Oh, two, two years. We 43? 43. We met yeah. 51 years ago. How do you put up with him if he's still oh. voting for Dan Andrews? Well, we have if, a fight he, over if he gives, <laughs> oh, did you have a fight over it? Oh, no, no, no. If he gives me my pocket money. And doesn't I'm complain. A traditionalist, yeah, Trad traditional man. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> God bless you both. I cook, and I'm, a, I'm the provider. <laughs> he, he provides the money. I cook up the five star. <laughs> you are the sweetest couple. I'll even forgive you that you voted Daniel Andrews in. But please, no, not, please yeah, seek seek the help you yeah. need to ensure it doesn't happen again. Remember, Western suburbs gets nothing from the Liberals. We never did. The only trouble is we get too much now. And what happens is there's too much work going on and you can't drive anywhere. You know, there's all roadblocks. So that's a bit of a problem. They, over, they overcooked it. Don't worry, I'm taking him back to the nursing home. <laughs> all right. He's Cheers, fellas. Yeah. Oh, bless you. That is what you were talking about. That is, that is wholesome. That is what I, 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 I wish Australia continues to be. That was, for me, that was the greatest moment 
watching that and even watching it within a relationship. Oh, it's fantastic. And uh, the man is absolutely right. The more that uh, we have satellite uh, 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 suburbs spring up, uh, you'll never drive on a road. Uh, the the the, uh, the 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 great cottage industry is witches' hats. If you can get a witches' hats franchise, uh, <laughs> you, there's not one road you'll drive down on any part of any day that hasn't got witches' hats on it. That's so and true. Uh, people stop signs. It's it, it, that is the best business to be in, mm. and you'll never drive properly on a road ever again. So uh, don't think you will. I reckon we cut to uh, off those other ones. It, guys, if you yeah. want to continue watching, go to the opposition dot show. The yep. opposition dot show. Type that URL in. I'll put it on the screen so people put can it on see. the screen and put it on that and keep that one rolling so people can come over and uh, or, or directly on Rumble because now we're going to get uh, we're going to talk about all the issues Sammy really wants to talk about and really? I rude rudely stopped him just because uh, I can't afford my bosses will uh, I'll, I'll I'll be out of a job if we get banned.
uh, by far the best side. And when that turns out they don't win it, you can say that's how much I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And just to wrap up here, for those of you who are watching on YouTube and Facebook, we had to mute the audio. Uh, we did put it on the screen there for you guys to see that it was available on Rumble. Unfortunately, you know, with Facebook, YouTube, these uh, platforms, uh, they don't allow free speech. But on Rumble uh, and Twitter, uh, we'll, you will always get to hear everything that we say. So make sure you're following us at the opposition.show on our website and also following along on Rumble and Twitter. Thanks, guys. See you.